in your mirror and smile. And whatever is reflected back, just know, like you were saying, you're a reflection of God. You've been created and, and made in that wonderful divine image. And so there is not a lot that you, or, or anything, now, I won't say a lot, but there's not something you got to put on you to be more beautiful than what you already are. It's just your acceptance of who you are. Because everybody in this room is beautiful to me. I see you. You may be trying to hide, but I see you. <laughs> everyone, everyone is beautiful. I owned a modeling company in Los Angeles uh, back in the early 90s. And the young ladies, the, um, the preteens, they were always wondering, they were always wondering um, why the models that they saw on television or the ones that, uh, the ladies that people thought were pretty were always so skinny and always had these skin tight clothes on and their breasts was hanging out or something else was hanging out. And so we learned from a very early age that which is acceptable, that which uh, we define as being pretty and, and attractive. But it's so funny, if you ever talk to the guys, they don't even care about all that stuff. They want your heart, right? They don't, they don't even care. And we just tripping and spending all this money on nails. I, and tr I've done it all, so I'm not talking about anybody because I did it, right? But you got the nails, you got the eyelashes. I had these, these last eyelashes I had on. They were so funny, they tickled me, man. <laughs> they, were, they were just like little trees or something, you know, and they just kept falling out, you know? So I was like, oh man, this is crazy. But we do that. We do that because we believed in the media, we believed in the television, we believed in the magazines, the trillion dollar beauty industry that tells us we need all of this stuff in order to be um, pretty. And I'm here to tell you, you're beautiful just like you are. And that's what Look in My Mirror is all about. Now, I came up in the 60s during my teen years. And uh, in 1968, I graduated from high school, and I decided I wanted to wear a natural, an afro. Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> there was something wrong with me. Why would you take this generation back all, all the way, <laughs> wearing your hair nappy? What's wrong with you? Why do you want to go around with nappy hair? You know, and so when I look at my parents, and I love them dearly, they're still alive. My mom is 90, my dad is 95. But they left the South. They left the South, so they didn't have to deal with that, right? So they get to California, and they got all of this that's unlike the South. And in here, I bring them back to the remembering what they had left. And that was just really awesome to me from a standpoint that I didn't know that they were running away from who they are. And it's okay, it's okay. So, but that was just one of those things. And so then I went back to the perms until I found out that the perm goes through your scalp and it forms a layer on your brain. Yep, yep. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not doing that anymore, right? Then here comes the straightening comb. And for those of you that don't know about the straightening comb, it is hot. Yeah. And, uh, you you like this all the time, like, oh, they're going to get me. Your ears are going to burn, the kitchen, right? Down there in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, no, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. But I decided I, I no longer want to abuse my body with the perms. Then I decided to do dreadlocks. Oh my God. I've always wanted locks. I was a little, little girl. I'm almost, don't you dare do that. I know. At home, believe it or not, in Puerto Rico, we do locks. Like, okay. Yeah, we do that. Okay. Yeah. Really? 
Well, I took another step with trying to take the race, the black race, back. Again. <laughs> <laughs> How was I going to ever get a professional job wearing dreadlocks? <laughs> How was I going to attract a man into my life wearing dreadlocks? Just everything. Oh, my dad just pleaded and begged with me, please, please, do something professional with your hair. <laughs> so, for all of you guys who has ever had to deal with outside or wondering in yourself, can I do this? Do I have the strength and the courage? I have been up against Big James Armstead. <laughs> That's my dad. And he, for the life of him, just could not understand. But when my hair got down to here, I was his little girl then, right? I got all this long. I never had hair. My hair never grew past my, sh my neck, you know? Right. But with the dreadlocks, because it was the natural state right. of my hair. That's right. No chemicals, that's no right. none of that. That's right. And so that's why I know mm -hmm. that when we honor who we are, the real beauty gets mm -hmm. to, to shine. And so that right. is the purpose behind looking in my mirror. God's groceries, as nature intended. It's a dedication to my sister, who died back in 2010. I believe it may have been the 80s when she was diagnosed with um, diabetes. And the doctor prescribed her prednisone, which is a steroid. It was brand new on the market, prednisone. They didn't tell her she was going to be hooked. Oh. Get hooked like a junkie. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You take that stuff, and now they give you prednisone for everything. Everything. A bee sting, a skin everything. rash, yeah. everything. Everything. And uh, seriously, when I tell you she was like a junkie, the doctor would say, well, you can only take this so long, and then you, you know, I got to take you off of it because you maxed out on, on how long you've been on this, on this stuff. And she would just go through convulsions, you know, all kind of stuff, you know? Oh, wow. And so her kidneys shut down. Her liver shut down. She had breast cancer. She had heart problems. Her body was just cut everywhere. We knew a little bit about herbs and, and the effect that they would have on, on the body. We just knew a little bit, though. 